Welcome to STS Presents, I'm Lucas Siska. Today guys, we're going to talk about how to kick in swimming, or more specifically, how to kick in the front crawl. Guys, do you ever feel like this, uh, or look like this when you try to kick across the pool? Well, I want to take you from that to this. There are three main elements when it comes to good kicking that I want to zone in on. Number one, ankle flexibility. Number two, we're going to look at the technique of proper front curl kicking. And number three, simply the cadence of the kick. We're going to explore these three main elements, put them all together and show you a step-by-step -step plan on how you can get motorboating across that pool with good freestyle kicking. So let's dive in. First of all, why is it important to have flexible ankles when kicking? Well, a big problem with most uh, people who don't come up from, from a swimming background when they try to kick is that they have very rigid and stiff ankles. So if you imagine that this is my leg with a uh, these are my toes pointed down, you know, when I'm swimming in the water. Most people, uh, who, like I just said, who don't come from swimming backgrounds, kick with almost a 90 degree angle on their ankles. So when they kick down like this, this motion is actually cutting into the water and pulling them backwards so they're fighting against themselves. Not to mention, when you kick down with your ankles like that, it makes your legs sink and uh, most people try to increase uh, their cadence when they do this, it just wears them out. They start spitting their arms and before they know it, uh, they swim 25 meters and they're dead. So guys, we want to avoid this. If we increase our ankle flexibility, when we kick down, we can have a floppy motion, just like you see a dolphin uh, in the water, how it kicks down and then its fin just causes propulsion. Well, we can do that too with our feet. We kick down and we flop with our ankles, so we have to get those ankles floppy. So let's look at a few things that we can do at home when watching TV or whatever uh, to increase our ankle flexibility. Nice and relaxing guys, you can do this while you're watching some TV. Not too difficult. Yeah, I like to do it when I'm enjoying myself. Roll the ankles one direction. Roll in the other direction. Let's get a wider range of motion away from the table. Just get into it, guys. This is making you faster. Now this you have to do according to your current level of flexibility. I've been doing this all my life, guys, so I can do this without pain or discomfort, but you gradually want to build it up. Maybe at first you just kneel down without sitting down. But here you'll see me rock back and forth several times increasing each rollback as I go back. Then guys, it's good to practice on land what you want to do in the water. The movement is initiated from the hip and it ricochets down to the ankle. Do both legs. This is the beginnings of teaching you proper kicking technique. I'm loving it. And at the end, guys, I like to get a deeper stretch, I'm manually pulling it back myself with my hands, and then rolling it myself. And all the while, we can be chilling, watching TV. It's a little bit uh, de-stressing, to be honest. Simple as that. All right, guys, let's take those floppy ankles from on land into the water and take a step-by-step -step look at proper kicking technique. Okay, so we're gonna take what I did in the living room uh, where I was flopping my ankle. We're gonna put that action into the water. Leaning against the wall and just trying to feel the, the pressure of the water on the top of my foot. Kicking from the hip, creating a little bubbling brook as you'll see here under the water. That's the goal, you're gonna create that brook. 
Now you're gonna see me take it uh, with both feet. On our back, guys, it's actually easier on our front to feel this pressure. That's why I want you to take a kickboard and hug it, hug it as such and kick on your back. Nice and gentle. From the hip, the action is initiated from the hip. The next step before we go to our front is vertical kicking. We want to feel the pressure of the water on the, uh, on the up kick and the down kick. Here's the action as you can see close up. Our third focus uh, that I mentioned at the beginning of this video is kicking cadence. Now beginners have this misconception that they need to kick nice and slow, but this is actually a very advanced technique that as you progress in your swimming, uh, it's something that you learn how to do. In the beginning, we need to learn how to whip that leg and we can achieve that by having really fast cadence. So I'm gonna first demonstrate to you the more advanced cadence on the wall, and then I'm gonna show you what I want you to do. So here's that slow, more advanced cadence that I was talking about. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit and show you what I want you to do in just a sec. That's it. Guys, we gotta create that white water behind us, just like this. And here's an excellent drill that you can not only practice your lungs, but also that fast cadence kick. Try to stay up there as long as you can. Then once we go into our front, we're gonna try the single leg kick, where we just focus on one leg at a time. The same whip action that we did on our back, we're gonna do on our front. And of course, put it all together, and let's motorboat across that pool. Well, there you have it. We have the three main areas of focus that I want you to zone in on. We have floppy ankles, we have kicking technique that I showed you, and then we have the cadence of the kick. If you zone in on these strategies and implement them consistently, I am really confident that you're gonna have big breakthroughs in your kicking. It's gonna be no longer the struggle to get across the pool, but you will be flopping around, motorboating across that water, just like everybody else. So, with STS Presents, I'm Lucas Siska. Take care for now.